but the second question is does first timothy 2 11 forbid women to teach or have authority over man hmm. well it's only appropriate we ask sister renee to answer that question first <laughs> yeah uh, I, I don't have the verse in front of me, but I know the ones they usually go to. For I not suffer a woman to teach or you stir up authority over a man. Is it is it the man though, or a man? I'm just wondering, is it the man or a man? Can you can you look it up for me? The man or a man? The man. Okay. The, the so, verse the verse that is actually cited in the question, First Timothy two eleven, uh, it is just simply. Let the woman learn in silence with all oh, subjection. Yes. Well, we got to look at what's going on here in the first century. Uh, in the synagogue, women were not allowed to be in the synagogue. Sometimes they'd have a back room or an upper area where women would be, but only the men learned the synagogue. As a matter of fact, uh, uh, the, their Talmud says it's better to burn the Torah than teach it to a woman. So that was their attitude of women. However, it wasn't God's attitude about women. They were the first evangelists, the first to see the Lord risen, and uh, it wasn't Paul's attitude about women either. So we see fellow workers in the gospel with Phoebe and Priscilla and many others. Those are the house of Chloe, which meant Chloe was the leader of that house church. So um, it is clear if you look at the whole of scripture that uh, women held very sacred positions in the church. Now, when it talks about being silent, what's happening here is now the Christians are having male and female be in the church. Well, women weren't allowed usually to learn the Torah. Some did, you know, you see some prophets, prophetesses in the Old Testament, but now they're together, right? So what do you have happening? Husbands, bugging their husbands during the preaching, asking questions. And so there's talking going on inside the church. If you look at these pastoral books, it is about uh, keeping order in the church. And it's the same thing with uh, taking turns to prophesy, not speaking tongues all at the same time. It's the same thing, keeping order uh, so that things it kept orderly. That's all there is to it. Decent and in order. That's the whole purpose of it. So when he's talking about women keeping silent, he's obviously responding to, hey, what do we do? The women are asking questions during they're talking to their husband. What do we do with this? He's answering that. Uh, the problem is we don't really see the letter that was sent to him or the questions that were asked. But it was more than likely what was going on if you can look at the context of these pastoral books it's about how to handle practical things inside the church there were also uh women coming out of paganism and the pagan religions often had priestesses for goddesses it was all women that ruled over the temple so they would come out of paganism and bring their false doctrines into the church they got saved but they still had some of their pagan beliefs. And so you'll see him uh, uh, contradicting some of those things that are being taught as well. Um, without that context, men have taken these verses out of there to keep women, to keep the body of Christ in which there is no male or female in Christ and shut up half the mouths of the body of Christ. Even to the point that, they can, they, okay, we'll let them, we'll let them give people the gospel, but that's it. Okay. What if they ask me something about scripture and I can answer it clearly? Oh, no, no, you can't discuss that. You're a woman. That's ridiculous. That is so carnal. It's of the flesh. God clearly had no issue with it. So, uh, I do not think these verses mean what most think they mean. Sadly, my church actually still treats women that way. Uh, that's one of the issues I have with it. But, uh, you know, I, 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 I don't know. I don't really know what to do about it because it's, it's been that way for so long. Uh, it's hard to, to show people. I mean, it's hard to show people the correct thing. And I, I can't tell you 
I know I have to stand before God and it said, be not many masters. And I never meant to be a teacher. I was just a sister in Christ. I still say I'm just a sister in Christ. I'm a nobody, but I, I cannot believe that God would allow me to go through all this stuff. Then give me this gift. I, I get it. Like I'm, I can communicate these things and clear them up and help people. Right. They're getting set free. They're getting saved that I, I, I'm the one that's going to have to stand before God. I just cannot imagine he would say, you know, you were a female. I didn't want you to say anything. I didn't want you to get anybody saved. I, I have to answer for it. And so I feel okay standing before God doing what I do. I do not feel that I'm doing anything against him at all. I think the context of those verses need to be taught better. I really do. Mm -hmm. Okay. Amen. <clears throat> Well, you know, on our Wednesday night Bible study, uh, uh, we've been working our way through the Pauline epistles. And I believe it was when we were in uh, the book of Romans that this subject was uh, discussed quite a bit because uh, you have some very prominent uh, women in that book. And also um, there's a concept that um, we talked about called prosopopoeia. And it's the, the idea that uh, uh, there's a lot of things in Paul's writings where Paul uh, says something in the scripture and uh, people think it's Paul's thoughts, Paul's words. But um, if, we under, if you understand it correctly, you realize that Paul is using this uh, um, uh, oratorical uh, uh, technique. Uh, and it, it is, if I'm, if I'm in front of you giving a, a, a sermon and I know that there are people who oppose my position, but they're not present. What I'll do is I'll say their position and then give my answer to it. And that's so it's a technique where you're representing the views of your oppose the opposing views and your views and contrasting them. And uh, that's what we find in the uh, beginnings of the book of Romans. And so it was necessary for Paul to instruct Priscilla, I believe it was, if I remember correctly. Was it Priscilla, Renee, in Romans? Or it wasn't Chloe, I don't think. Uh, but, uh, Phoebe was carrying the letter. Oh, yeah, Phoebe, Phoebe, it was Phoebe. Uh, we see that uh, in the um, introduction or uh, the, there's a salutation or something that we've discovered that was um, talking, introducing Phoebe to them and putting her in a position that was really quite elevated and quite a responsibility and authority. And um, I, I believe that she was given the responsibility not only to deliver the letter to the Romans, but to read it and to read in the manner that Paul instructed her and said, make sure you read this so that they understand these words are from the Judaizers position and these words are my position. And, and uh, so how, you, how she was reading it was essential to understand the meaning behind it. Uh, to, so you can learn two things from what I just said. Uh, one is this uh, concept of prosopopoeia that Paul used, but also uh, the fact that he trusted Phoebe and, and there's other examples of, of Chloe, uh, Priscilla had a church in her house. Um, and when you had a church in your house, you were the leader of that church. Uh, and so there's really all kinds of uh, evidence in the scriptures and extra biblical uh, history that uh, tells us that the, the way that the church views women's role today is seriously wrong uh, because they have, were given a, a really a, a, an brilliant, really an equal uh, standing in terms of their authority and positions in the church. Uh, I, Renee, don't you have um, either a video or a playlist uh, really going into great detail on this subject? I, I did have some. Um, they're pretty far back. I should probably do something, put it together. But, you know, I always put this off because I get so much hate mail from it. And so I, I just I have to be strong when I put these out because I get flooded with hatred when I do anything about this. It's surprising yeah. that this is the attitude. Yeah. And it's really upheld in the Christian church. It's really upheld against women. Yeah. You know, women are somehow more easily deceived. Yeah. Women shouldn't teach. Women shouldn't do anything. And they take verses here. And, and somebody just asked, how do we know what Paul really meant then? Okay, look at how he treated the women. Look at how they worked with him. I think that that's what we need to look at. And when people actually look at how God dealt with women, 
Like, I mean, if you look in the Old Testament, it was crazy. They had a woman ruling over the nation, even as a military leader. And they twist that to say it was a judgment on Israel. Some judgment. She made them successful in battle. So, I mean, I don't know how that was a judgment. But, um, you know, when you look at the full counsel of God and divide what's man's understanding versus God, when he says there is no male or female in Christ, meaning the same spirit dwells in all of us and no one's better or greater. See, I believe the man took dominance over women instead of being partners at the fall, because that was part of the judgment. Your de desire shall be for your husband and he shall rule over you. That's what happened at the fall. That's not happened at the beginning. And since that fall was reversed in Christ, it should not be that way. Yeah. Uh, we should not be ruling over one another. So I think we can determine that when we study the whole counsel of God and see how Paul dealt with women. He called yeah. them his fellow laborers. And, you know, it's really sad, uh, Brother Luke, in the King James Version, the word for deacon is changed to minister or servant when it applies to a woman. But it's the same word, deacon. Yeah. And we know that Phoebe in, in the scriptures should be referred to as a deaconess. That's right. And, uh, um, well, I forgot I was more I was going to say, but let's give Brother Jordan a chance. He hasn't spoken on this yet. Go ahead. Yeah, well, I think it's very important. And Renee touched a little bit on the context to understand exactly what is happening. We know from chapter one that Timothy is being told to stay in Ephesus because a heresy is breaking out, but not just a heresy in general, like the actual leaders of that church, like got corrupted by this heresy. And we know in chapter five that the women were gossiping. Um, so sort of spreading this around um, a little bit quicker. Um, so that's kind of the backstory in terms of, you know, what led up to that line. I have a couple of verses that I wrote down um, so I see two questions in this question. The first, um, is it forbidding a woman to teach? No. And it th they've already mentioned Phoebe in Acts 16. I think that was one of the most evident. But also, let's take a look at Titus 2.11, where it says um, the woman is told to teach younger women and children. And you, uh, it's funny because we kind of do see that system in a lot of churches where they're teaching Sunday school, nurseries, having women's group. Um, and then in Acts 2, 18, it says men and women will prophesy. I do believe that God designed the church for people to have different roles. And for whatever reason, we're not meant to understand the full context of God's design. Now, is a woman supposed to submit to a man? I think the Bible illustrates that throughout, but not in the way that we interpret it, that as if the woman is beneath the man in any way. I think the reason why the Bible lays this out, first of all, the whole Eve was easily deceived by the serpent. That kind of bugs me because I think either would have been deceived before the other. And what kept Adam from being deceived if he was so <laughs> above everybody? Um I think the reason why the serpent goes to the women and why men are supposed to be protectors of women, and I don't think that just means like physically, I think that means spiritually. I think that's why the father is the head until the woman marries a man. And the reason why I feel that women need special spiritual protection from men is because I feel women are more prone to spiritual attacks because they bear children. So if Satan can wipe out the woman who was giving birth to a child, uh, this is just, I have nothing to back this up. This is just my theory, <laughs> but, but it just, that seems to make sense. Like if he could have taken Eve out right then and there, because the whole thing was he thought Eve would have died right then and there. So I don't know. That's kind of my whole opinion on that. Now this design of a woman submitting to a man we have to think about how everything in the Bible correlates with our spiritual relationship. And we know we are the bride of Christ and we are to submit to Christ. So I think that's kind of why we see an illustration and an instruction for a woman to submit to a man, a bride to a husband. 
for that reason to give us a better understanding, just like we had to see uh, circumcision and um, water baptism and all these other signs that really illustrate something spiritual that we wouldn't be able to fully understand. And I think Renee does a beautiful job at breaking down the correlation between Jesus coming back during the rapture for his bride and how that relates to the Jewish wedding. I always find that completely fascinating. But those are some of my general thoughts. I hope I didn't offend any women by saying that. <laughs> no, I, I want to be clear on something. I am not opposed to traditional roles like in marriage. You can't have two heads. You can't have two heads, right? So, but I also think that men have taken that to abuse and women, to abuse them, to make them feel less than. It doesn't say she's less than. Uh, that's the big difference. And the, the other condition is that he has Christ as his head. So if he's submitting to Christ, there's no problem. There's no problem because he's doing what he's supposed to do. He's loving his wife like Christ loved the church. And so I have no problem with that. I also feel it is best that a man disciple a man. I think you can get into all kinds of problems if women and men are getting too intimately intimate spiritually. So I am not against that. I actually like it. I feel better with a male pastor for that reason. And in addition, I feel better with a male pastor because uh, men tend to respect his authority more. So I, I don't have a problem with that at all. I, I'm not a pastor and I'm not trying to be one. But to say that someone like me that is studying scripture, spending time in the word, God's given a gift and a heart for the lost, has to shut up because she's a woman. That is ridiculous. And it's a it's just twisting the scriptures. And I I don't know why anybody would think it means that. Um and in regards to uh, authority over the man. There's two uh, thoughts over that. One was the Gnostic teaching that females were created before males, and she was put in for authority before Adam's. Like the woman was created first. That that was the uh, and that was in Ephesus, by the way, where the big goddess temple was. So that's a possibility there. But also, it's in uh, um, uh, relation to a uh, husband and wife, I believe males and females in general just because you're a male i don't have to submit to you to any man just because he's a man that's just that's not scriptural either so i think these things have to be done in context uh with husband and wife um it's one thing and i am not a feminist I think a fe the feminist movement in some aspects have, has damaged this country, damaged the family unit, uh, put women down for wanting to be at home as if there's something wrong with raising your children. You know, I think there's a, a, a problem with that when our president is saying we're going to get everybody back at work so that women can get uh, child care. How about the women be the child care? Can't they stay at home and take care of the kids? It was like the goal was to get women out of the home away from their children. So um, I am not a, uh, a a modern feminist or anything. I just do not believe that God sees us in the flesh like that. I think that there's earthly roles that our genders do dictate. And I, I'm not opposed to that. It's fine with me. Uh, but when it comes to uh, preaching God's word, getting people saved, serving the church, I, I don't, I don't think it's right what they've done uh, to women uh, and use the scriptures to harm or to uh, make them feel less than or to make them feel that God loves them less or differently. I think it only applies to earthly roles, not, not when it comes to uh, their ability. A woman cannot prophesy if she has to be silent. So something's wrong there. It cannot mean what people say it means. Yeah. Okay, good. Well said. Uh, the, um, there, there's a couple of examples that uh, we, 
people bring up uh, to tell us about women need to stay in their place. And uh, that portion, Timothy, and also there's a place in Ephesians. Um, it says in Ephesians, wives, submit yourselves unto your own husbands as unto the Lord. Um, so, well, it is important for us to understand that uh, the scriptures do not say for women to submit to men. That's not what uh, you should get out of the scriptures. Uh, women are uh, not uh, required to or expected to uh, um, let any man uh, dictate to them. Uh, it, it does say husbands. So let's look at that as scriptures, Ephesians 5, 21 through 23. 22 is the verse that many people I know uh, hold on to. And I believe that some people I know use Ephesians 5.22 as a means of saying that uh, I am I'm one of one person in particular actually required his wife to call him Lord. Um, and it's because of this verse here. Uh, and uh, also he, they cited that, well, uh, Sarah called Abraham Lord. Uh, so that's, the, they can take th these things and they find in the Bible and make them wives, their wives, uh, uh, basically the, the doormat and that they have to just do everything they're told and uh, be obedient to their husbands. And that's not what we should be getting out of the scriptures. If we look at 21, 2 and 3, it says, submitting yourselves one to another in the fear of God. Why is it they like to start with verse 22? Uh, if you back up one verse, it's telling us submitting our, yourselves one to another. So Jordan, you're supposed to be submitting to me. I'm supposed to be submitting to you and to everybody else. Uh, and uh, uh, Jordan, you need to submit to Renee. Uh, we, we submit ourselves one to another. Now, if, if that's true, and I believe the scriptures are true, then, then what are we going to do? Say, well, there's an exception. Uh, the wives are the exception. We don't submit to our wives, even though it says submit yourselves one to another. No, the wife has to submit to the husband. So uh, if you get the context of the husband and the wives and everybody, all of us to each other, we should be submitting. That means uh, like the acronym JOY, J-O-Y, Jesus others yourself let's put ourselves last let's put other people ahead of us their needs submit our, our needs put our needs in the in the in, on the shelf and and, and and be concerned about other people's needs first and I, i'm only after god what god wants from us um, Amen. Uh, brother luke i i wanted to make one more statement on it i i want to state also women and men are not the same they're equal in value to God and in purpose, but they're not the same. They're not. Women are the weaker vessel in the sense that physically we are weaker. It's one of the reasons I don't understand why women are trying to be sent to the battle in foreign wars and stuff in the military. Somebody had mentioned that in there. Women are, they think differently, but together in union and marriage, it's one flesh. It works because they're different. Now, I don't know why women are trying to be men and men are trying to be women or thinking that somehow one is less than the other when together it's meant to be a perfect fit and one flesh. Um, so we have different attributes for a reason to fulfill different purposes. And there's nothing wrong with that. Denying that and saying we're exactly the same is wrong. We're, we're the same in equality in the sense of purpose and, and of worth but not in, in the same way we, we think and, and we are physically lesser, uh, weaker. That's just the way we were made. There's no shame in that. There's nothing wrong with uh, uh, saying that we're different um, and that, that's fine. I want it to be clear that's not my position is to say women are just like men. We're not, we're not at all. Uh, we, we're we're made for different things and that is absolutely fine what i have a problem with is when you're taking carnal things and making applying them to spiritual uh making people feel that god has a less of a purpose for them or loves them less or any of that because i've i've heard a lot of little girls go why does why does god not like girls why why are they not as good as boys why won't he i'm, I'm serious that's the teaching so um it's sad to me. Well, Renee, I think your, your point is uh, uh, 
generally true, but it, it is a generalization. And, and uh, uh, we could we could bro broadly just say, well, most women tend to be more emotional, and men tend to be more logical. And they they actually, I think it was Time Magazine about 1970. There was a, a headline on the on the cover, and it said, "Men and women are different." Science has concluded this. Uh, and that is, they prove that the brains are, are actually function differently in a man and a woman. And we obviously know, just uh, we can observe, there is a difference between men and women anatomically. Uh, so if, to, to think that we're the same is, is pretty naive. And, and therefore, these differences are meant to complement each other. Uh, the things that are my strengths and, and uh, a woman's strengths uh, and our various weaknesses, we should, by working together, have a perfect, uh, be like one perfect person uh, because of our combining our strengths and, and uh, nullifying our weaknesses. So, but there are exceptions to these too. The normal role, like you might find a woman that's not emotional at all and her husband may be emotional. Uh, and logic, uh, she might be the logical one. You might find a, a, a man who's physically weak and his wife is actually very physically strong. There are cases, there are exceptions to these things. And you may like look at an, an income, you expect the man to traditionally has been the, the worker that provides, but today many women are, are more capable of providing an income for the family than the man. And so, uh, even though the, the, the point is generally true, we, should, we need to understand and allow for these exceptions. Um, but also, Renee, um, you mentioned that uh, 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 every time you do talk about these kinds of these subjects, uh, that you get a lot of hate and backlash. Um, uh, you, you have a lot of courage in, in the way you've spoken out on not only this, but various other th subjects. You know, when when you've changed your mind and, and broken away from tradition and adopted a different do doctrinal view, and then you publicly uh, explain it, uh, it takes a lot of courage to do that. Uh, I've been on YouTube for 12 years now, and only after one year did I realize that I had to make a choice because uh, I was close to many um, Paul Onlyus. Uh, they they believe the gospel as we do. They're equally saved as us. And yet they they constantly were correcting me and chastising me for preaching out of John instead of only Paul's letters. Uh, and you can't get saved from John, you know, is their position. And uh, finally, I had to, uh, for, for peace, I kept my mouth shut. But eventually I, I came to the conclusion that the truth uh, uh, trumps popularity. So I said, no, you're wrong. And I started making videos against hyper dispensationalism or Paul onlyism. And I lost about 20 of my closest friends at that, that time. And I decided then it was liberating though, because I decided then that if I, I if I had a position that was um, uh, unpopular, I'm not going to keep my mouth shut. Uh, I, I want to be free to say, and we need to be uh, bold enough to say what we believe is the truth and let the chips fall where, where they may. Uh, so I would encourage you to don't let that uh, uh, affect your um, your courage to to uh, go ahead and take these positions uh, regarding, especially for women. This is an important position. And finally, I noticed some qu one question in the chat I can answer very quickly. Uh, so someone asked a follow up question: Would you uh, uh, allow for uh, a woman? to be lead pastor in, in the church. And uh, in, in times past, I would have said no. In fact, I walked out, one of the churches I walked out of was because they had a woman that was a head pastor and I couldn't accept it. Uh, I wouldn't have any problem with it today. Uh, but I, I, I my main problem is with the, the whole, the pastoral position. That's why here at CES, we don't use the pastoral system. We don't have a pastor, you've probably noticed by now. Um, we have what is called the Presbyterian uh, system. Um, Presbyterians are Calvinistic, so don't let, don't get the idea I'm supporting Presbyterianism as a whole. But their their governmental system is not pastoral; it is it is a, a committee of elders. So we have we have a, a few elders that are leaders of this congregation, 
uh, rather than one person that uh, is the is the pastor. So um, uh, uh, it's not a problem with us. We don't have to decide can a woman be the pastor of this congregation or not because we don't have that as an issue. But if if a church does use a pastor and they had a woman, it would not. I would not. Um, it would not forbid uh, me from uh, from uh, participating if I like the the pastor and the the church. Um, but other people don't agree with that. So um, any more on this, Renee or Jordan? Uh, yeah, I want well, to be clear. I uh, certainly will and have uh, publicly stated things that are opposite a lot of tradition or a popular view. I just have to be emotionally strong enough to do it. So uh, I haven't done it in a while. I have to kind of make sure everything's okay and that I'm I'm geared up for all the hate that I'm going to get. So. Uh, the timing just has to be right on it. Uh, you're you're right, Luke. I um, obviously will continue to say what my position is on it. I just have to do it at the right time for me, because if I'm already kind of broken or struggling, I need to you know be strong before I put some out that I know. <laughs> That's why I waited so long and wanted to get my clarity on my uh, presentation for why I believe the lost perish instead of live forever in eternal torment. I believe they're destroyed or they perish. They, you know, everlasting destruction. Um, but I had to make sure I could verbalize it and that I was solid on how I could explain it. Um, but I'll get there on this as well. I'll probably end up doing a series and organizing it. 